Amen. He has placed upon the shoulders of men, the Bible teaches us, amen, the responsibility of the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ to preach, as Paul says, the whole counsel of God. Amen. Just as it was delivered to the church. The preacher, the teacher, is not to add to it. He's not to take away anything from it. Amen. And a good number of the prophecies, by the way, of the Old Testament that were spoken to the prophets, they were not understood by the prophets at that time. And Jesus even said to his disciples, you are blessed because your eyes see things that they did not see. Your ears are hearing things that they did not hear. You have an understanding that they did not have. Amen. And, and, and yet in our day, almost 2,000 years since the time of Jesus Christ, amen, we now have an even greater understanding, amen, of God's revelation, of his plan, amen, and his purpose, because we now live so much closer to the end of this world than they did, amen, and we are witnessing and we are understanding Amen. Again, all of the signs and the wonders that the Bible told us would come to pass. As these prophecies of the scriptures are being fulfilled, we are living right here in the midst of it. And Bible prophecy, by the way, is crucial to our understanding of what God in his own counsel has decreed and declared that he's going to do. God is not hidden what he's going to do. Almost every new Testament book, almost every single book of the New Testament contains prophecy. With Revelation entirely given over to prophecy. Amen. And according to one professor and theologian who's by, whose name is uh, J. Barton Payne, he lists 1,817 different prophecies in the Bible. 1,817 prophecies in the Bible, which entails more than 25% of the entire Bible. Do you know that your Bible, more than 25% of your Bible is devoted to prophecy? Yes. I mean, and many of these prophecies have already been fulfilled, by the way. That's right. That's right. And, 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 and painstakingly, as it were, if God, amen, has gone through this to reveal to us, amen, in detail what he is going to do. And he has demonstrated, again, in all of the prophecies that have already been fulfilled, yes. amen, why is it that man is living in oblivion, is living in ignorance of what God is going to do when God has said what he's going to do? Why should we be living in, in ignorance of it? Amen. Blinded. We should not be blinded. Amen. We should not be unaware. Amen. About what is happening and what Jesus said was going to come to pass. Amen. It's right there in your Bible. Then the people who are oblivious, who are being blinded, amen, by the darkness, they're being blinded by demonic forces. The Bible speaks of this. The God of this world, Satan, blinds the mind of those who do not believe. And that's the simple problem, ladies and gentlemen. It's no more complex than that. People just don't believe God. They don't believe. They don't believe God. Amen. And with all of the access and the availability that we have today, with information, amen, again, you can search on, now we find everything else that we want to see and, uh, and read and spend all the time in on the internet, do we not? Yeah. Hours and hours, even at work, when we should be working. We're watching all kind of YouTube, TikTok, Instagrams, you name it. Amen. But the Bible, the Word of God, the Gospel. Teaching, preaching, information is a plenty to be found. Amen. Amen. And we have more information and more access than any generation ever in the history of mankind. Amen. 
But the Bible speaks again prophetically that they would be ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. This is what Jesus says in Luke 21 in your Bible. Go back up to verse number 25. Jesus says these words. He says, there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. And on the earth, there will be distress of nations with perplexity. That means confusion, delusion. People just just look they don't, they don't know they, they don't know some of them don't even know their name. Just living in confusion, have no purpose, no understanding. Amen. Just existing. There will be perplexity. The Bible says the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear. And the expectation of those things, just listen to what Jesus says, which are coming on the earth. He says, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now listen to what Jesus says. Now when these things begin to happen, Look up. Look up. Lift up your heads yes, because your redemption draws nigh. Then he spoke to them a parable. Look at the fig tree. And he said, you know, in fact, look at all the trees, Jesus says. When you see that they are budding, you see and you know for yourselves that summer is now near. So also when you see these things happening. Can you see? Oh, say, can you see? When you see these things happening, Jesus says, know that the kingdom of God is near. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all things take place. Now, I want to take you back. Now, some of you are going to need your seatbelts on. Strap it in. Amen. Because just four short years ago, we were living in the year 2020. Mm -hmm. And what I call the year of fear. Mm -hmm. Now, be not deceived about what transpired in arguably one of the most pivotal years, in my opinion, in modern history. And from what transpired in that year, there will continue to be reverberations and repercussions. Amen. From so many, it was so it, it, it was so many things. Unthinkable, unprecedented. Events that can never be undone. Would never be, never be, never be. Never be fixed by man. And please understand, there will always be dire consequences when fear is in control. When fear rules the day, there will be dire consequences. And I'm telling you this on the basis of the word of God. God has not given to us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a what? The Bible says fear has torment. And when the devil gets a foothold, he does not like to leave. He's going to have to be cast out. And because there were so many shocking and disturbing things that happened, that transpired during this time, and it happened so suddenly, in the same year, all it's just a convergence of things that happened so rapidly. These things, I believe, again, this is my opinion now, I don't think they'll ever be fully understood. I don't think they'll ever be comprehended by our narrow minds, by our narrow perspective, because 
the complexity of what transpired in that year, again, and I, I, I'll venture to say this, and I'll go out on the limb and say it, amen, this was, this was something that God did. The powers of the heavens were shaken. Because we had, and I'm gonna read something from this book in just a moment. There were dramatic and traumatic, mm -hmm. disruptive forces at work. Oh, yeah. And it was thrust upon billions of people. Every nation, every nation, every nation, every nation yeah. came upon or uh, under rather the spirit of tyranny, mm -hmm. bondage, yeah. fear. Yes. I mean, there were so many earth shattering unknowns. Oh, Amen. Oh, and, 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 and again, the human mind cannot wrap itself around what happened. It happened so quickly. And I am of the belief, this is my belief. You can believe what you want to believe. I believe that God unleashed the hounds of hell on this world because of man's continual rebellion against him. I, 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 I Y'all know I rarely do this. This is an exception. I'm making an exception. I want to read an excerpt from this book written by a woman by the name of Naomi Wolf. For those of you who don't know her, she was, for the greater part of her life, all of her adult life for the, for the most part, and she's around my age, a full-blooded, full-throated feminist. And an unbeliever, these are by her own confessions. I'm not putting anything on her. She's, if you read, she'll tell you in her own words the same thing that I'm just saying. She wrote this book because she came to, she's a, prof a professional, if you will, journalist old school journalists that does their actual homework and research. And she ran in the kind of circles that most people would be envious of. She had access to presidents, politicians, people of power. And she expresses from her perspective, what transpired during that year. Now, this woman is an unbeliever. She doesn't even believe, she didn't even believe in God. Listen to what she said, or the supernatural, or anything of that nature. Listen to what she says. This is just a portion of what I'm going to read, just a read, little short few verse, or paragraphs, rather. I'm so, read, I'm so accustomed to reading from the Bible, said verses. How y'all caught that? This is what she says. Whole belief systems were abandoned painlessly overnight as if these communities were in a grip of collective hallucination. Like the witch craze of the 15th to 17th centuries in Northern Europe. Intelligent, informed people suddenly saw things that were not there and were unable to see things that were right there before their faces. And then she goes on, and this, by the way, comes from the chapter in the book. By the way, the name of the book is called Facing the Beast. Let me tell you, I was so, I was so moved by, I almost bought this book for everybody in here. <laughs> but I'm afraid some of you may not want to know the truth. I would hope I would hope that everybody will want to know the truth. Now listen, listen to these final little couple paragraphs here. She says the bottom line is that this infection of the soul, this abandonment of modern civilization's most cherished post-war ideals this edifice of evil, listen to what she says. She, she understands how evil this was. Oh, yes. 
She said she calls it an edifice of evil. She said this edifice of, of evil was too massive. It was too quickly erected. It was too complex and too elegant to assign only to human awfulness and inventiveness. In other words, she said it had to be something above human. It had to be above human. What happened in this year had to be, a, this is a woman that doesn't even believe. But she understands from understanding human nature, understanding history, and seeing what is plain before her eyes, that this could not have been something that man put together. Let me finish. She said this sudden drop or dropping of post-enlightenment norms and critical thinking this dilution of even parent sense of protectiveness over the bodies and the futures of their helpless children. This acceptance of a world in which people can't gather to worship. These structures themselves that had built up this, she uses the word demonic, world in less than two years and imposed it on everyone else, these heads of state, heads of the American Medical Association, heads of school boards, teachers, heads of unions, national leaders, state level leaders, and town hall level functionaries, all the way down to the men and women who disinvited a relative from Thanksgiving due to social pressure because of a medical status which was no one's business and which affected no one this, this is what she says this is it this edifice of evil was too massive too quickly erected too complex and too elegant to assign only to human awfulness and inventiveness. Man, is no way man could have done this. No matter how much they collude together, they could not have pulled this off. This was demonic. It was from the pit of hell. And for those of you who, by the way, were here in 2020, those of you, some of, most, some of you were not here. Amen. During this particular time. Amen. And I was preaching in 1 Peter and 2 Peter. I was on my way to 2 Peter when all of this began. And probably for the next six months, from March on through the fall of 2020, for the most part, all I preached was anti-fear messages almost. Because we were we were on the deluge. Oh, yes. Preachers everywhere, yeah. pastors everywhere, yeah. capitulated. Yeah. And not only that, I, 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 you know what? I can't even go there. I can't even go because I'm gonna get hot. Oh, man. And y'all don't even turn the air down low enough for me. Most of them sold their souls yes. for a piece of bread. Yes. And the fear and the torment of that year and the following year, it was exacerbated and exploited through the use of technologies, propaganda. Some of y'all have forgot already. Did you know that they were? Did you know that in some countries they were planning to do this everywhere? Implant a chip in you? They did it in some places, and you could not buy or sell. 
One lady, my mom said, it had the chip in her, but it malfunctioned, and they would not sell her groceries. This happened. Y'all remember? Y'all remember standing in the line at the grocery stores? Standing outside every day. I was still working. And by the way, at that time, I had to get, and I still have a paper copy of this. I had to get a pass. Y'all remember that? You could not even be out of your house driving down the road unless you had your papers. I had my papers because I was considered an essential worker. So I had to put that paper in my vehicle to be able to leave my house. I know y'all forgot all about it. It's all gone. No, no. They use propaganda and fear to persuade billions of people that everybody was going to die. Unless they follow the dictates and the decrees of the governmental authorities who were our saviors, who were our deliverers, who were our keepers, who cared so much for our health and well-being. Because we were all guaranteed to die unless they kept us alive. I'm getting hot again. That's all right. That's all right. Listen, let me tell you something. When people have no fear of God, they will be subjected to and they will eventually be taken captive by terrorizing demonic, destructive spirits right out of the pit of hell. And all you need, let me tell you something, all you need is a reverential fear of God. That's all you need. You need to have a fear of God. Jesus told him, don't fear, don't fear, don't fear. Don't fear what man can do to you. Not to fear devils, demons, loss of property, loss of your worldly possessions. Not to fear sickness. Attacks from the devil, disease, and praise. You don't have to fear any of that. Jesus said, if you seek to save your life, you're going to lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you'll find it. The apostle said, the apostle Paul said, I'm already dead. I've been crucified with Christ. And the life I'm now living is the Christ that's living in me. And as long as he wants me here, I'll be here. Paul said, I'm persuaded. And neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principality, powers, nothing. Nothing. Nothing in this world has power above the power of God. That's a word. A virus so potent. So deadly, so strong, you didn't even know you had it unless you got tested. And the truth, of, I'm just telling y'all the truth. Ain't no money in it for me. Now the, all the propagandists, they were making money hand over fist. Oh yeah. For me, I ain't got no reason to lie to you. The tests were rigged. Everybody that died died from COVID. Everybody. Gunshot victims, car accident victims. I'm telling you the truth. I'm not telling you something. I'm making. I'm telling you the truth. Everybody died from COVID because the hospitals were receiving. Thousands and thousands of dollars for each COVID death, so everybody died from COVID. Uh, 
Now, again, I am convinced that there is grave danger in pretending as if these evil, maniacal, and demonically controlled events never happen. If you want to pretend they never happen, you are in danger. Because it is crystal clear that there was great distress in every day. Just what Jesus said. He said, when you see these things happening, do you realize there were people in poverty in India that were just shut out and shut out and didn't have no transportation. They shut down the train system and transportation. People had to walk miles and miles and miles just to hopefully make it back to their villages. This was perplexity everywhere. This was a worldwide phenomenon. And this was not just done by one person, two persons, three persons, five persons, ten persons. This was demonic. Yeah. And God let them loose. God turned them loose. Because the devil can do nothing unless God allows it. That's why I feel safe. I know I'm safe in saying that God turned them loose. Now, Jesus said, the failing of the hearts of men will be in expectation of the things that are coming to pass. And he said that the powers of the heaven will be shaken. And there will be upheaval upon this earth that no man, no government, no earthly institution will be able, it will not have the power to, amen, control. They're not going to be able to restrain it. Listen, the hounds of, listen, I'm telling you, the hounds, you see what's happening now on the college campuses everywhere. Yeah. It's not over. There's upheaval in the land. In all of the lands, mm -hmm. there's hatred and wrath against the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, and what happened in 2020 was also aimed directly at the church yeah. to destroy the church. Yeah. Do you know how many churches have not recovered yet and will not recover? A lot of them are shut down for good. The preacher. I'm going to get up. All right, get up. Yeah, preach it. Fix the air. Ran and camped out in their basements for three years. And one preacher, he said it publicly. They said, it's not me criticizing him. Or, you know, I don't, I don't even remember his name. I don't know him. He's not, you know, nobody I knew. Amen. He said, I'm not coming back. Until an angel come from heaven. Tell me it's safe to go back. Jesus said, when you see the trees in bloom, when you see them budding, you know what season it is. You know what time it is. He said, so likewise, when you see these things yes, sir. Yeah. taking place, yes, you should know. You should know. You should not be confused. You should not be in the darkness. You should not be oblivious. You should not be blinded to the fact that the kingdom of God is near. Yes, sir. And then he says, heaven and earth will pass away. But my word will by no means pass away. Take heed. Listen, look. Verse 34, Luke chapter 21. I'm almost finished. I'm finishing right now. Jesus says, take heed to yourselves. Oh, yeah. 
Lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing. You know, some people, they just, that's all they want to do. That's all they want to do. Looking for the next good time. The next chilling time. The next relaxing time. Take heed to your, listen, when the Bible says take heed, when the Bible says or issues a warning, you better take it seriously. Jesus says, take heed to yourself. Now, don't worry about, don't, don't worry about nobody else. That's right. That's right. Worry about yourself. Yeah. That little girl said, y'all, some of y'all seen that. She said, worry about yourself. She said, take heed to yourselves, lest your heart gets weighed down. Carousing with drunkenness. Cares of this life. Oh, Lord, help us, Jesus. Woo! Oh, we probably need more help there with the cares of this life than anything else. Amen. When Jesus came to the house of Mary and Martha, the two sisters, y'all remember that? Martha came to Jesus, said, Jesus, Will you please tell Martha to come and help me with these dishes and getting this food ready and put the silverware on the table? Will you please tell her to get in this kitchen and help me? And Jesus said, Martha, 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 Martha. We're going we gonna to get to that. We're going to get to something more important. See, we, we get, and that's, and by the way, it's one of the devil's specialties. Mm. One of his specialties is destruction. Yeah. Yeah. I got a whole list. You know what? Y'all, I, I got I to gotta do it. I got to do it. I got to do it. I got a whole list. I got a whole I'm, I'm a, I, 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 I did this a long time ago. So let me let me do I'm 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 gonna, I'm gonna take it I'm taking a minute to search it. There it is. Boom, pull it. This search thing is powerful. <laughs> it's in my notes. Amen. I title I titled this the bedeviling deeds. These are the things that the devils, demons specialize in. All begin with the letter the, the letter D, like the devil. Demon. Deceit. Disillusion. Distraction. Discouragement. Destruction. Defeat. Disarming. Disparaging. Disrespecting. Disintegrating. Delusion. Disappointment. Disease. Disaster. Doom yes. and death. Yes. There's probably some more. Yes. If that ain't enough for you. Doggone devil. <laughs> all his deeds. <laughs> he, he loves to distract you. Yes. And get you worried about all of this. Jesus said, why are you, why are you worried about that? Why are you worried about tomorrow? Why? He said, seek the kingdom first. The Gentiles are seeking out for that stuff. They worried about that. Some of y'all are already in the 2027. 2028. 2029. Why are you worried? And I'm not talking about planning. I'm talking about, I'm talking about worrying stuff. Take no thought for tomorrow, Jesus says. When it comes to allowing worry, anxiety, and fear to saturate your mind. This is what the Bible is talking about. This is what Jesus is talking about. Because your, your, it will cause your heart to be weighed down. 
with the cares of this life. Yes, that's right. Amen. And then he says that they then comes upon you unexpectedly. For listen to what he says. It will come as a snare. That means trap. Unaware. On all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch therefore, Jesus says, and pray. That listen, that you may be counted worthy to escape all of these things. Now, listen, that's not just a reference to the rapture. Because of course, when the rapture comes, we're out of here. But he's talking about things that are going to happen before the rapture. We get a chance as the people of God to be in the ark of safety, under the shadow of the wings of the Almighty, in his protection. Amen. And we get to escape all of these things. Because Jesus told us, by the way, when these things begin, you're not to be troubled. You're not to be disturbed. He said in Matthew 24, which is a companion to Luke 21, there will be wars and rumors of wars. Earthquakes in diverse places. But he said, don't you be troubled about these things. Amen. Just watch and pray that you may be counted worthy to escape. You want to be in the great escape. I'm telling you. God has a plan and a way of escape. Yes. Amen. And it's only through Jesus now. Yes. And you try it any other way, you won't escape. Yes. Amen. But you may be counted worthy to escape all of these things, yes. he says, that will come to pass. Right. And you'll be able to stand before the right. Son of Man. Yes. And you know what he's going to say to you? Well done. Yes. Well done. Yes. Well done. Good and faithful servant. Woo! But the great escape is only going to be for those who are aware, those who are awake, those who are alert. Amen. Those who are watching and praying with the expectation. Listen, I believe we can. We may get to a time where we. We may not be praying it now. We may get to a time we're going to be praying what the Bible says at the end of the book of Revelation. Even so, come Lord Jesus. We ought to be praying it now. And we're supposed to be, as the people of God, looking for him. Because these things are happening. These things are happening. Amen. And Jesus said, when you see it, you better know. Just like you see the trees budding. And you know it's springtime and the birds are singing. Pollen is falling and you're sneezing your head off. You know what season it is. Those of you who have the. You know what season it is. Nobody has to tell you. So again, he said, when you see these things, you better know that the kingdom of God is not. Lord, help, 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 help from the sanctuary, Lord. Help our hearts, our minds, our focus, Lord, not to be distracted and carried away in carousing, in drunkenness, swept away with the cares of this life. We brought nothing into this world. We carry nothing out of it. Lord, we just want to trust you from day to day, knowing that you are the faithful God who supplies all of our need according to your riches and glory. You'll never leave us. You'll never forsake us. You're always with us. You promise to keep us. You promise that you have a place prepared for us, that where you are, where you are going, where you've already gone, there we will be also. So, Lord, we just want to thank you that you will keep us right now, in this day, in this season, in perfect peace, with a mind stayed on you. God, our eyes upon you. You're the author and the finisher of our faith. 
Help us, Lord, as we navigate in this world of sin and sickness and sorrow and perplexity with disaster dooming every day with a deluge of delusion and destruction happening all over the world. God, we have a safety place of refuge in you. The ark of safety under the shadow of your wings. And Lord, we're praying even now. And well, Lord, we know that even now you are still calling men and women out of this darkness and into this glorious light. So Lord, we pray and we intercede even now for those who are lost without a hope, who cannot see the handwriting that's on the wall, who cannot see the demonic that is at work, do not see the darkness that is all over this earth, all over this land, in every nation, where the hounds of hell have been released and they are biting, they are poisoning, they are wreaking destruction and havoc all over this world. But God, you are able to deliver. Lord, open blinded eyes. God, open blinded eyes. And Lord, we pray, we pray that none, and I know, I believe it, I trust your word, I trust your word, I know that your word is true, that none of your sheep, none of your people will be lost. Because you said, my sheep hear my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. So God, we pray, and we believe, and we trust in your divine protection. And Lord, we pray that there will be repentance and revival in your house amongst your people, oh God. Your people that are called by your name. You said if we would humble ourselves, if we would pray and turn from our wicked ways, you said you would hear from heaven, forgive sins, and heal the land. So Lord, we pray, we pray for revival in the midst of your people. Because we have faltered. We have failed. We have lived in fear and doubt and unbelief. So God help us. Stand on your word and stand on your promises. Every one of them, yea and amen to the glory of God. We thank you for your promises. We thank you for your soon coming for your people. Lord, we just want to be ready when the trumpet sounds. When the dead in Christ rise, and we that are alive and remain will be caught up together with them. And we are going to forever be with you, rejoicing in glory around the throne of God. Thank you now. Glory now to you. Honor now to you. Praise now to you. Majesty, dominion, and power now and forever to the King of kings and Lord of lords. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for all things.